Hi folks, my name is Michael Nichols and I'm here today to work with you on a behavior that we call STAY, STAY. There's more than one reasonable way to address this behavior, there's more than one reasonable way to teach it to our dogs. Um, I've tried a few of them and this is the way that I like to do it, I recommend it highly. First of all, we're always going to use a consistent hand signal and our hand signal is going to be the uh, worldwide stop sign. Our hand is perpendicular to the ground, not parallel, not at an angle, perpendicular. We say stay. If our dog is at our side, we'll turn it this way and say stay. Uh, one thing about stay that I really recommend is, is to differentiate between stay, which is a long-term remain where you are, and a wait, which is a short-term hang on a second, I'll be right with you. To help our dogs keep this straight in their mind, I recommend that we always return to our dog and release them within touching distance. We don't ever call our dogs from a stay. We want to be successful every time. Think of this as an opportunity to practice error-free training. This means we don't ever get further away, or we don't ever let make it last longer, or we don't ever ask them to stay with a distraction level that's so high that they can't hold that stay until we return to them. So with a higher distraction around us, we're going to go for shorter times and shorter distances. Uh, if we're going to go for a longer time, we might go for a shorter distance. If we're going to go for a longer distance, maybe we go out a far ways, but we come right back. Over time, all of these parameters will even out and we'll be able to do long distances over long times with high distractions. But in the short term, while we're teaching it, we want to make sure that we're not asking for more than they can achieve. And I'm not exaggerating with this, folks. My recommendation is we don't ever ask our dogs to hold a stay that they can't. So early on, our stays are probably going to be one foot and one second long. Build it up very slowly, practice a little bit every day, maybe a few times a day if you've got the time and energy for it. Build up slowly and don't ever ask them to do something that they can't do. Build up really slowly. If ever you have a setback where your dog doesn't hold their stay when you ask them to, then go back a few steps and work up slowly again toward it. Don't just keep trying something that they've already demonstrated that they're not able to do every single time. We want a completely error-free practice session again and again. Usually it's easiest to start with our dogs in a down, preferably even a settle. Uh, I differentiate between a working down and a settled down. A working down is where our dog's back legs are in line or parallel with their front legs like a sphinx, like the sphinx. Uh, the settled down is where their back legs roll over to the side and their body curves slightly. Usually a settled is our most um, solid and reliable form of down. Uh, either one works, but I recommend the settle if you can teach your dog to do that. By the way, to teach their, our dogs to do that, we ask them to lay down and then bring their head over to the side like this. Rudy down. Wait. So this is the working down, his back legs are in line with his front. To achieve the settle, we simply loop. <laughs> you heard me say settle, that's a good boy, good dog. So to differentiate between the working down and the settle down, to get him to do a working down, I'll bring him over here, good. Now his legs are straight, then we teach him settle, down, settle, good boy, like that. See how his back legs are over? This is a more reliable form of down. Now I'm going to stand and I'm going to try to be not intimidating, not, not, I don't want him to be afraid of me ever, but I'm going to be less inviting by using my full size and uh, a less inviting voice, which might be simply a slightly lower tone. So I'll say, stay. Then I'm going to give him a treat and repeat it. Stay. Stay. Now that was a good sequence, so I'm going to come in, give him a final reward, and say, all done, all done, and that way he knows that he has completed his sequence of stays. Now I think of that as actually one big long stay. You might think of it as three short stays. However you look at it, he never broke it until I touched him and told him all done, so we were completely successful and error free. We'll build up slowly over time to add distance, time, and distraction. It'll look something like this. Rudy, settle. Good dog, stay. 
So first we add a little distance, then right back in. Stay. Stay. Then we might try adding a little bit of time. Stay. Stay. Now there's a lot of different kinds of distractions, and of course, the most common, really serious distractions that our dogs will deal with will be other dogs, children, skateboards, cars, bicycles. But another one is just humans coming near them. So that's where we're going to start with today. I'm going to start adding the distraction of myself being close to him in some sort of different ways. Stay. <laughs> stay. So I'm going to try reminding him to stay and stepping behind him for a moment, coming right back in, reward that, stay. I might get to the other side of him, stay. Come right back and reward that. Then I might try walking away from our dogs by turning our back, stay. Remember, usually when we're working on stay, we tend to face them the whole time, stay. Try this, stay and walk away. Try turning yourself in a circle. Stay. <coughs> I mentioned earlier about error-free training. Before we turn ourselves in a whole circle, maybe we say stay, turn ourselves part way, come back in, reward them, stay, 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 stay. If we do this right, it'll become our dog's favorite trick. Think about it from their point of view. All they have to do is lay there, get fed for not doing anything, but remaining where they are. That having been said, remaining where they are is pretty tricky sometimes when there's all kinds of stuff going on around them. We don't ever want to use stay in a way that causes them to be afraid, but also be afraid to leave. So we always want to practice our stay when they're feeling comfortable and confident. Um, so now I'm going to demonstrate some different kinds of things that I like to practice with them. Stay. We go from side to side. Go behind. To teach these, I use food the whole way. So I'll put a treat on his nose, stay, and hold it there until I get all the way around him. Stay. And as I release it, I tell him to stay again. Uh, to step over him, this is an important one. Stand at their side, and I like to use my, my hand that's further from him. Stay, put the treat on his nose, step over him, and release it as I get to the other side of him. Stay. Uh, it's interesting what kind of things cause our dogs to break their stay, and I try to practice all of them, little by little, tiny increments. One common one that causes our dogs to get up is when we sit down or stand too close to them. So I don't ever want to distract them and make them feel bad, stay, but I will practice by simply sitting in front of them. Give them a treat. Remind them to stay. <coughs> Feel my butt. Stay. Slide around him. Stay. All these are things that are weird. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Went too far that time. Settle. Settle. Good. Stay. Notice that. When he broke his stay, I didn't do anything. This is incredibly important, and this is different from the way that I learned stay when I was a kid. Um, I don't recommend that we ever do anything when our dogs break stuff. I mean, when they, when they break their stay or they don't do what we say. Um, this is part philosophical and part scientific, but the general idea about this is, is that he broke his stay because I pushed him too far. It doesn't make any sense to then say or do something to him to make him feel bad. I'm the one who should feel bad. I started off by saying we don't ever want him to break or we want to do error-free training, and then I made the error. So if anything, I should tell myself, bad trainer, bad trainer, no, no, no. He didn't do anything except get up because he was scared. So um, to help him with that, I might then try and build up more slowly next time. I might slide around on my butt in quarter circles instead of full circles, giving them a treat each time, that kind of thing. So we build up really slowly. 
Uh, and then the final thing that I like to do for a distraction is leave the room. This one's pretty hard for a lot of dogs. Um, and one thing that I can do to help them is have them face the door that we're leaving through. Now, uh, after a while, you don't need to have them face the door anymore, but it can be helpful in the beginning. And again, we're going to build up slowly. So it'll look like this. First, I'll release them and then turn them. Okay, buddy, all done. Good boy. Will you come over here, please? Good dog. Rudy, settle. Good. Stay. Stay. So I didn't leave the room yet, but I went all the way to the door. Stay. This time I'll go through the door and come right back. Stay. It's really important to not repeat ourselves when we do behaviors like sit or down. When I ask a dog to sit or down, I'm never going to tell them twice. We'll say it once. If they don't get it, I need to go back and start reluring them or recapturing the behavior, give it a better reward, practice more often, whatever it is. But repeating ourselves is folly. With stay, it's a little bit different. With stay, he's already doing it. So reminding him is simply shortening the duration and increasing the likelihood of his success and moving more towards error-free training. So as long as he's holding his stay, I can remind him again and again. This isn't the same as if a dog is running towards you or running away from you and you say, stay, 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 stay. They're not doing the behavior. That's repeating ourselves. Reinforcing it with a verbal cue to remind them of what we're trying to do so he doesn't get distracted or so that he's understanding that I haven't forgotten that you're there. I'm not abandoning you. I'm just reminding you that, hey, we're, we're working together. So I might tell them stay three times between here and the door. We're a little bit past that. So now I'm going to go into the other room, come out a different door, and come back, walk around them, and do some stuff just to demonstrate what we're up to. Stay. Good dog, all done. Now the reason I wanted to demonstrate that doing it twice and moving around like that is to show that repeating ourselves early in the process <laughs> doesn't lead to a less reliable stay or cause our dogs <laughs> to get up if we don't do it later. It's incremental. We're using incremental little, little slices of time and distance to reinforce the behavior it starts off at one second and one foot. It goes to two seconds and two feet, three seconds and three feet, 10 seconds and 100 feet, however you want to look at it. We're breaking it up in little tiny bits, hoping that we'll never cause them to get up. Last thing about stay. I really like dog science, and I try not to say anything I can't back up with proof. With that caveat, I'm going to tell you something that I don't have proof of yet. I have observational experience, which is valid. It's just important to not think that it means for sure. 
Dogs who learn a reliable stay change their personalities. They really seem to learn how to calm themselves down. It's like the child who learns how to sit still in class and becomes calmer for it. Or the person who learns how to meditate well and becomes calmer for it. Dogs who learn to stay still for long periods of time, well, they learn to stay still for long periods of time. And it can really help with their behavior in the home, especially. I meet many dogs who are bouncing around the house. And yeah, we need to exercise them more and give them more mental stimulation. But stay is mental stimulation in and of itself, you know? A dog who can learn how to hold a 10 minute stay while their people are moving around the house doing chores, boy, that's a dog who has learned how to be calm. Now sometimes we'll see a dog holding a stay and they're just, just waiting to get up. That's not really the same thing. For that, I recommend making sure that we're using only reward-based methods, break it up into little increments so that they know what's going to happen next. And we're always going to return to them to release them. This is, I cannot emphasize this enough. A lot of times when we see dogs doing this, they're holding their stay, but they're trembling, waiting. It's because they think they're going to be called at any moment. Rudy's never called from his stay. He knows that if I'm away from him and he's on a stay, Nothing's going to happen until I get back to him, so he learns to relax. Now, every once in a while in an emergency, if we have to call our dogs from a stay, we might transition it to a different behavior from a distance. So, for instance, I might, while he's on a stay, from a distance, say, watch, wait, and then call him. That's a little more complicated, and we get into that into an advanced stay video if we get around to that. In the short term, my strong recommendation is, don't call your dog from a stay, return them. They learn to calm themselves down and it can have uh, vast and far reaching positive effects on their personality and your relationship. Can't it? Yes, you're a good boy and I love you very much. I love you very much.